This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Asia Gore. Our top story this half hour, an investigation now underway in Missoula where a box containing remains of what's believed to be three children was found in a shed. A search warrant obtained by MTN News shows the box was located in a shed on the 2100 block of South 12th Street West back in September. Now the former tenant of the rental property had been evicted the previous week. A cleaning crew hired to clean up the property found the box of bones in the shed and contacted authorities. The Montana Crime Lab verified the remains are human. A University of Montana anthropologist determined the bones are likely modern, not archaeological. The professor estimates the ages of the children to be 6 to 10 years old, 5 to 8 years old, and 2 to 4 years old at the time of death. No suspects have been arrested. The investigation is ongoing. An airman at the Maelstrom Air Force Base in Great Falls stands accused of kidnapping in California. 22-year-old Julia Russell of the 741st Security Forces Squadron was arrested earlier this month. She faces charges of kidnapping, robbery, and assault with a weapon. The Tulare Police Department received the kidnapping report from a woman who said she was forcibly removed from her home by three women. Police say the victim was beaten and robbed. Two other female suspects were also arrested. The Montana Supreme Court agrees to allow a Lewistown man to withdraw his guilty plea in a child molestation case. Jason Taranis was charged in 2015 after he allegedly molested a five-year-old girl. The Montana Supreme Court finds that the victim's parents had inappropriate contact with jurors during his trial. And the family also intimidated defense attorney Jeffrey Foster. The parents were removed from the courtroom and could only observe the trial electronically. During the trial, Tarana has pleaded guilty to a lesser charge. The defense attorney returned to his hotel that night after the hearing and killed himself. The high court agreed with the district court that there was a, quote, air of fear in that courtroom that affected Tarana's and his attorney. In other news, for the first time in a quarter century, Alabama voters send a Democrat to the Senate. Republican Roy Moore, plagued by allegations of sexual misconduct, lost to Democrat Doug Jones. CBS's Mo Lange has the story. Alabama elected the state's first Democratic senator in 25 years. I think that I have been waiting all my life and now I just don't know what the hell to say. Doug Jones squeaked to victory by about one and a half percent. Republican Roy Moore blamed his defeat on allegations of sexual misconduct with teenage girls. Part of the problem with this campaign is we've been painted in an unfavorable and un faithful light. Moore has so far refused to concede on the hopes of a recount. Alabama's Secretary of State says he'll certify this election sometime between December 27th and January 3rd. That gives Republicans back in Washington time to pass tax reform before Doug Jones takes his seat. President Trump won Alabama by nearly 30 points, but his endorsement failed to give Moore the boost he needed, and even the state's other Republican senator withheld his support. I'll tell you, uh, didn't vote for him. Tennessee Republican Bob Corker said he's proud of Alabama's voters. I know that I'm supposed to only cheer for people on my side of the aisle, but uh, I thought the people of Alabama um, did a great thing for our country last night. The Alabama results bring the Senate's Republican majority to a razor thin 51 to 49 going into next year's midterm elections. That will make it even harder for President Trump to push his agenda through Congress. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, Montgomery, Alabama. Analysts believe the strong support for Jones among African Americans, women, and young voters give Democrats the win. Meanwhile, Minnesota Lieutenant Governor Tina Smith has been appointed as the state's new U.S. Senator. Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton made that announcement today that Smith will replace Senator Al Franken, who is resigning amid sexual misconduct allegations. Smith, a Democrat, will serve until January 2019. She also plans to run in a special election next year to serve out the entirety of Franken's term, which ends in 2020. Legislation named for a Billings veteran suffering from toxic exposure during his service is now law. Part of that bill signed Tuesday by President Trump is an act introduced in part by Senator John Tester. The Gary Deloney and John Olson Toxic, toxic Exposure Declassification Act will have a big impact on veterans exposed to toxic substances while serving in the military. 
John Olson is a Billings resident who participated in a program called Project Shad in the mid-1960s. His military records during the time he worked on naval vessels are classified. Olson has fought cancer four times but has never been able to receive VA health care because his records are classified. The bill was included in the 2018 National Defense Authorization Act, a $700 billion bill that funds the military. An 18-year-old Bighorn County man died this morning when he was struck by a car after he was ejected from his own vehicle in a rollover crash. The incident was reported around 5 a.m. on Interstate 90 near the East Hardin Interchange. The Montana Highway Patrol reports the man was ejected after he rolled the Ford Taurus he was driving. Outside the car, the man was struck by another vehicle. The crash happened on the Crow Indian Reservation, so the Bureau of Indian Affairs is investigating. A Butte business is destroyed after a fire broke out Tuesday morning. Firefighters arrived at Ray's Heating and Sheet Metal on East Front Street to find thick plumes of smoke. The blaze tore through the roof and walls. The health department actually issued an air quality warning due to the smoke that flooded the town. The cause of this fire is under investigation. One week after the Thomas fire exploded in Southern California, the thousands of firefighters battling the blaze are making progress. That fire is larger than all of New York City. It's just one of six major wildfires torching the state. More than 1,000 structures have been destroyed. The Thomas Fire is the fifth largest wildfire in modern California history, burning more than 230,000 acres in Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. We turn now to the weather scene with Ed McIntosh, and we've got some snow around the state. That's right, especially western Montana. We expected to see some, and certainly as we take a look at some of the cameras from around the state, we're seeing that. Here is a look over towards Butte, only 29 degrees, and you can see the effects of the low clouds and the snow showers around that area. Then also, as we look out or try to look out towards uh, uh, Flathead Lake around Polson, continuing to see some snow showers there. Also some chilly air and we'll start to see the snow decrease around Missoula as we start getting later on in the afternoon. A look towards Bozeman Pass shows some of the hazards we might run into later in the day with slick snow covered roads as you start getting into your evening commute. And we got some breaks in the clouds around Great Falls right now, but still sitting in the 30s. We'll talk more about the weather in a few minutes. Thanks Ed, we'll check back in. The Great Falls City Manager says he wants more money than he's being offered to take the job as Billings City Administrator. Greg Doyon is negotiating with the Billings City Council over his proposed salary and benefits package. Doyon emerged last month as the city's top pick to replace retired Administrator Tina Volick. Doyon's current salary at the city, as the City Manager in Great Falls is around $132,000. The City of Billings offered Doyon $155,000 a year, but he wants $170,000. The Billings mayor says Doyon has requested six weeks paid vacation, a raise based on his job performance, and about $12,000 for moving expenses. The city countered, offering Doyon four weeks vacation and $7,000 in moving expenses, but is holding firm on its salary offer. Contract negotiations will continue with a special meeting on Thursday. The University of Montana president releasing the final draft recommendations to CHOP programs in an effort to save the school millions of dollars. This 12-page document has 40 recommendations made by the task force created to prioritize programs on campus. The report says the dean should consider discontinuing or suspending the applied science major, film studies minor, and duplicate history and political science minors. The report also suggests merging the School of Art and the School of Media Arts with the College of Visual and Performing Arts. The final decisions on program cuts will be determined this Friday. Still ahead on the new news, a man involved in the Russian meddling investigation ousted after anti-Trump text messages will tell you what he said. But first, Ed has our weather forecast. Stay with us. You're watching MTN News with Asia Gore, Storm Trekker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Northern Egg Network. This is the